Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Shook. I make videos for NBA. I make videos for NFL. All these videos, they get posted on this subreddit right here called DF Sports. I make updates with all the news that comes out throughout the day, what that changes for me. You guys really got to check it out. I'll link it down below in the comments. It's, it's really, really important. Like, you can see the updates I make and... You know, I, I feel like it's just super important. Like, Mitchell's out. I would play two to three Cavs in every single lineup. And I just absolutely loved um, that four. Um, we got the Heat lineup. Um, we got um, OG News. Man, I love Scotty. I really like Trent, um, etc. So, we, we got Butler News. So, it's really, really important. Um, that'll be linked down below. And I... Like I said, I go over what that changes for me with the entire slate. And then if you ever need to get a hold of me privately, you can do so on Twitter right here. All right, let's go with my lineup. But before we do that, if you are interested in joining my Discord where, you know, I have player pools for cash and tournaments, um, cores for cash tournaments, a um, whole bunch of stuff that will be in the Reddit post as well that I'll link down below. So um, let's go into my lineup from today. I'm not going to cash today. Um... Bam out of bio, man. I just, uh, I, I can't. I, I just cannot with Bam out of bio. Uh, it's unbelievable stuff. And here's the thing. So the core that I had for today was Tyler Hero, Karis Lurt, Evan Mobley. And then outside of the core, I told everyone to get to at least one more Cav, Struss being my Struess being my favorite, he nuked. And then a core of my second favorite, he did well. And then I told everyone to get to some sons, like Kevin Durant. Um, so I had a multi-core thing today, and all of them smashed. All the Cavs absolutely nuked. Tyler Harrow did well. Um, I said I really liked Bam Adebayo. He absolutely sucked. Um... What else did I say? What's at the top here? Um, um, Scotty Barnes. I said to get to possibly Scotty Barnes, too. He nuked. Um, I'm really mad. I almost played Dennis Schroeder, too. Unfortunate there. Um, what else? What else? What else? Oh, I said I liked Bane, Jaron Jackson Jr. Unfortunately, um, Jaron had a bad game. Uh, Bane did salvage at the end. But I nailed a lot of this slate. I, I feel like I really nailed this slate. Um, it's just unfortunate. Bam. Um, sucked. So, uh, yeah. Um, let's go over this slate. So, you're getting an early video because it's Sunday. Um, I have to go to bed after this to be up early tomorrow for NFL. So, that's how it'll be on Sundays. Um, so, get a bit of an early video here. Okay, so Atlanta, um, Atlanta at Milwaukee, uh, don't necessarily love the spot here. Um, I think Trey Young is a fine spend up, um, has been okay to start the year. He is going to play big minutes. Um, I think if he just has a good shooting game, he'll probably do pretty well, but he shot the ball very, very badly to start the season, but he is going to stuff the stat sheet, um, do everything for this team. It's going to be him, Murray, just dominating the usage. I think he's in play. He definitely ranks below pretty much all of the other spend-ups for me, like I'd rather play AD, I'd rather play Steph, I'd rather play Dame, I'd rather play Sabonis, I'd rather play Giannis, I'd rather play Embiid, um, I'd rather play LeBron, I'd rather play, you know, pretty much everyone over Trey Young, so he definitely ranks, um, probably is one of my least favorite spend-ups on the slate. DeJounte Murray at 7-1, I think it's just okay, just there for me, um, another guy that I'll have the ball in his hands a decent amount, um, Priced right, maybe a little bit too cheap, but once again, I think there are better plays. So, Murray, Young, they're just more contrarian plays to me on this slate. Clint Capella, Okongwu, these two guys are kind of going to split the center minutes. Um, Capella played 28-29, and then Okongwu will basically get the rest. Um, I think I prefer the price on Okongwu. I actually think he's an okay value on this slate. We don't have a ton of value on this slate, so I actually think Okongwu is pretty de uh, pretty interesting. Um, four tournaments at that price point. And then Capella, I think, is priced about right. Bogey at 5K, he'll get decent run. Um, I think he's just meh. Um, 
don't love it, don't hate it. Fine, it's like a last piece. And I think I'd rather play like Jalen Johnson over him, who I said, I keep saying it doesn't matter if he starts, doesn't matter if he comes off the bench. He's a really good point for many guy that's going to stuff the stat sheet. Um, if he keeps getting 30 minutes, he is still too cheap. So I do like Jalen Johnson at 4.9K. Going to be interesting to see what his ownership now comes in at after two back-to-back really good games. And if you need a pretty safe value, like I said, there's not a ton of value on this slate. I think DeAndre Hunter is pretty safe. 31, 32 minutes last two games. Definitely a bit of an outlier performance here. But uh, more often than not, he's not going to kill you. Um, Might not win you a tournament unless he goes for a complete outlier performance like he did last game. But a pretty generally safe value play if you do need it. Um, And then Bay at 4-6 playable. I think I prefer like Jalen Johnson, um, Hunter over Bay. So I think that's going to wrap it up for Atlanta. Let's move on to the Bucks. So at the top, I think Giannis is still too cheap in my opinion. Um, 35 minutes, uh, which is actually uh, pretty surprising to see. I think normally in the beginning of the season, I know they have a new coach this year. I was kind of expecting like 32, 33 ish minutes for him. So good to see he did play. 35 minutes. Also got into a bit of foul trouble, I want to say, as well. So could have played more. Um, got into foul trouble in the first half. So I think Giannis is one of the best spin-ups on the board. Um, he's always going to be one of the best spin-ups on the board on pretty much every slate that he is going to be on, right? Um, Damian Lillard had a massive, massive game in his first game with the Bucks. I want to say he was top three in scoring for a team's debut, I want to say. Um I forget who he's behind, but I want to say it was like top three, maybe top five, but incredible performance by him. Did play huge minutes as well. Um, I still think it's much easier to get to Giannis at a similar price point. So Dame personally for me is nothing more than a contrarian play, but we know, we know. Pretty much all the shots are going to be Dame. It's going to be Giannis. So the usage is going to be there. Giannis has given him the green light. So he's still in play. I think once again, I'd rather play other spend-ups over him, kind of like Trey, um, the Trey situation. I think all the other spend-ups look a little bit better today. And then we have Middleton out. Um, you know, Brooke Lopez at 5'7", just fine with it. Um, I played him last slate at no ownership on that two-game slate because people think it's a bad spot up against Embiid. He was like 2% owned, but people don't understand when a center going up against Embiid can go out to the three-point line. Um, it's actually a good spot. Um, but Brooke, I'm just okay with no strong leans there. And then Bobby Portis will get decent run off the bench. He's a good point for minute guy. I think he's priced about right. And then Malik Beasley will play decent minutes. Um, you know, he's going to have open looks. It's just a matter of if he get, um, hits his shots to reach value. Cause other than that, he's not really going to do too much else. Um, so the floor is really low with Beasley, but the ceiling is there. Um, but like I said, most of the shots are going to be. It's going to be Dame. It's going to be honest. Now with Middleton out, some shots do need to go around as well. Uh, but Middleton already was limited last game. Didn't take too many shots. So it's going to be Dame. It's going to be Giannis. Um, Outside of that, with Chris Middleton out, we'll see who they do start. Um, could be Connaughton. Um, either way, Connaughton's going to get a bump off the bench or if he starts or not. So I actually think if he does start or comes off the bench, he is a solid value play. Um. So I don't mind Tim keeping on the starting lineup. I assume he will be the one who starts and I would like him for value. Jay Crowder had a nice game off the bench. Good rebounder can do a bit of everything. I think he's okay for value as well. Um, and you'll see more run for um, maybe some more for the main guys. Campaign didn't play much. Hard to go there. They just played Beasley a ton. Um, on to the Warriors. So um, what did this news? Okay, so it looks like Steph Curry is questionable. Draymond Green said he'll play, but it's officially probable. And then Jonathan Kaminga is questionable. I could have swore we did not have this news. This news must have just dropped. Um, So um, I'm going to go under the assumption that they are all going to be playing. And then if they are out, we'll make some updates um, on the Reddit post. So with all of them in, I really like Steph's ceiling. I I think Steph is going to go under-owned once again. And I really like this game to target. Um, just like I said, when that Spurs Houston game, nobody wanted anyone in that game. Everyone was super low owned. You guys saw my lineup from yesterday. I absolutely jammed Fred, Fred Van Fleet. He nuked. I think it's a similar situation here. Two teams that are going to play really, really fast. So I think this environment is great. I think it's going to be a bit under owned as well. So I love Steph for tournaments at nine, four, absolutely love him. I think Chris Paul, 
if Draymond Green is in, which looks like he will be, and I assume he'll be in a limit, Draymond that is, um, Chris Paul will lose a little bit of ball handling, but he's not going to take too big of a hit. I still think he'd be a solid play at 7-2. Clay does have a ceiling, but his floor is very low. You guys know my feelings there. Find us like a last piece in. Dre would be hard to go to. Like I said, I'd expect him on a limit. Now, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with the starting lineup. Um... We'll see, but even then, like, Looney becomes riskier. Um, Kaminga, um, his minutes take a hit would be even riskier. Sarge would take a hit. Um, so getting to the secondary plays for um, the Warriors with Draymond in would be a bit challenging, in my opinion. Um, and then, like I said, if Steph is out, um, then I'll make some updates on Reddit. But then, like, Chris Paul is going to look great. Um, Clay gets boost. Um and then we can start looking to some of these secondary guys, um, like GP2, etc. Um, so keep an eye, keep an eye out for that. But I, I do expect all those guys to play as of right now, and it's a pace up spot for Houston. I think Houston's going to go under owned once again. So Sengun at seven five, I really like. He's going to stuff the stat sheet, also play huge minutes as long as he can stay out of foul trouble. So really like Sengen. I like Fred Van Fleet once again. I think he'll probably be loaned, but maybe not after the last game, but he played 40 minutes in regulation. Has double-double upside. Going to stuff the stat sheet. It's a pace-up spot. So really like both these top two guys for tournaments. I, I like Jalen Green ceiling. I think he's fine. Um, Jabari Smith, I think, is super, super safe. Um, at 5'3", played, what, 30? I can't do math. 30 three minutes in regulation uh, might have gotten to some foul trouble too um, if I'm seeing that right but I think he's okay at 5-3 Dylan Brooks is always playable as a value but a super low floor there and then um, they're running a pretty tight rotation so it's kind of hard to go to anyone off of the bench for them Alrighty, so Simon's going to be out for a few weeks. Um, tough spot here. Aiton up against Joel Embiid. Don't really have too much interest in him. Jeremy Grant at 6'2". He just feels super, super safe. Um, I do question the ceiling, but um, just seems very, very safe to me. Um, hasn't shot the ball well to start out the season, but I'm fine with him. I think the standouts, once again, are going to be the guards for me. Now, I don't know if I'd play all three guards together, but I think you can get to two of these guys if you wanted to. I think Scoot will be the lowest owned. He's struggled to start the year. He's also very, very, um, always gets into foul trouble. So I think he'll be the lowest owned of the group, but I think all three look pretty good as long as Scoot can stay out of foul trouble. Shaden Sharp is going to basically play all the minutes he can handle. He played 41 minutes, shot the ball 23 times, definitely gained... Um, gained some stuff and usage from Scoot foul trouble. Um, but I think he'll play big minutes regardless. I like uh, Sharp quite a bit. Like I said, I like Scoot quite a bit. I think Brogdon is too cheap at 5K. I think he's a solid play. I wouldn't play, like I said, all three together, but I think you could play too. Um, I think Scoot will be the lowest owned if you want that as like a decider. Robert Williams, no. We saw some decent run for Kamara. Um, Summer League legend. Um, Probably like a large field tournament dart for me, and I'm not going to play Thibel, um at all. I'm just not going to do it. All right, Sixers. So not sure if Hart, I, I believe Harden's going to be out. So that's the uh, assumption that I am under right now. Um, Joel Embiid at the top. I mean, if this game stays close, he should be able to absolutely feast here up against Portland. So um, love Embiid as a spend up. I think some other spend ups look a bit more optimal, like Giannis, you know, like Anthony Davis, like. Um, uh, you know, getting down to this like Fox, Kwai, range, LeBron, uh, range might be a bit more optimal, but I love the ceiling for Joel and being in this spot. I really, really do. Um, and then nobody wants to play Tyrese Maxey. I, I don't understand. I, I don't get it, but Nurse is going to play him all the minutes he can handle. Um, good spot against Portland as well. Um, so Tyrese Maxey, I'm Pretty high on once again, even at that price point. I think people are just scared of the price. Uh, but no Harden. Um, his usage just goes way, way up. Um, his ball handling goes way up. He's super, super aggressive. So um, I still really like Maxi, even at 7.9. Tobias Harris seems priced about right to me. Same with Kelly Oubre. Same with Melton. Um, so outside of the top two main guys for me, um, there isn't much here uh, for me. On to the Lakers. So I think AD... Really stands out to me up against Sacramento. I mean, this game should just be super high scoring. Um, 
So I absolutely love Anthony Davis on this slate at 9-1. I think LeBron's playable. Although they did say he would be on a limit, he did play 35 minutes. If you think he does play 35 minutes again, then I think he's solid. D'Lo Reeves both look good to me. I do give the edge to D'Lo. Um, I believe in my first video, I said there is always a chance of him getting benched. He did get benched, but still played 33 minutes. I think normally he's probably going to play around 30 minutes regardless every night. Good point per minute. Um, also been stuffing the stat sheet. So I, I do like both the guards here for the Lakers. Would know. Um, Prince, when he's not owned, no one plays him. Bust, but when he's giga, giga chalk, absolutely nukes the slate. He's a playable value. Once again, I don't love it, though. And then Gabe Vincent, I think, is a solid value. I think regardless, we're going to get low 20s minutes and then could play more depending on how both of the Lakers guards do play. So I think he's a relatively safe value at 4K. And then uh, I don't like much else here for the Lakers. Let's move on to Sacramento. So um, once again, I think this environment's pretty good. So I think Sabonis is really, really safe. I love Fox's ceiling at 8-7, but um, floor is definitely lower than Sabonis's. But I definitely have interest in both the top two guys here for Sacramento. Last season with the with the Wings, it was just weird. Keegan Murray was always the one getting benched. Um, and then they would kind of like rotate with Monk and everyone else. Now it seems like Keegan Murray's the safe one. And they're just doing whatever with like Herter. Um, I think Barnes um, has played decent minutes. He's not really going to get ben benched too much, but it seems like this season it, it is Herter. Um, so I think uh, Keegan's my favorite of the bunch. Um, I think he's super, super safe, and when he is hitting his shots, he does have a ceiling. Um, so if I were to play any of these wings, it would be Keegan. Monk, he'll play low 20s minutes off the bench, does have a ceiling. He'll chuck when he's out there. Um, a playable value, and then I don't like much else. Um, McGee will get the backup five. He's a good point per minute. He is the flatman price. Um, a playable dart if you do need the value. All right, Spurs. So, Wemby, um, obviously his minutes aren't going to be great to start the season, but I still do like his ceiling at 8K. Um, and then Vassell, Keldon, they're just there for me. I think Zach Collins looks pretty good once again. He's just doing everything for this team. And he's also just playing huge, huge minutes. He just needs to hit a shot, man. So um, love Zach Collins once again. Um, Sochan starting at the point. I think is very, very safe at 5-1, although I think he didn't close here. Um, but I'm expecting around 30 minutes for him. I like him quite a bit. He'll probably be pretty popular tomorrow. Jones is getting good minutes as well. I think he's okay to solid at 5-2. Um, you're seeing some Chetty, um, you're seeing some Bassy. I don't know if it's necessary to go to those guys. All right, Clips, so in a really good spot. Um, I kind of like all three of the main Clips. I think the best one looking to me, point per dollar, would be Russell Westbrook. Um, but these three guys are going to dominate all of the usage. They're all at fair price points. So I do have interest in all three of the main Clips. Usually I don't like touching the Clippers, but at these price points, it's definitely intriguing. Zubac um, only played 19 minutes. Plumley didn't play much either. Um, you saw a lot of Robert Covington, um, and you saw some, I want to say Batum. Yep, saw a lot of Batum. Uh, looks like Terrence Mann will be out um, against the Spurs, so we'll see. I, I really don't know what they're going to do, because they played a big team in the Utah Jazz, um, and they went small. Um so I'm really, really interested to see what they do here. Um, if you think Zubac plays 25 minutes again, then you can play him. Um, if you think they go small again, then you can look to Batum. Um, I think Roko, if he starts, is going to be probably play around 20 minutes regardless and seems like a solid value. Um, but if you think they go small again, you could go to a Batum. Um, just know it's very, very risky. Um, and then um, Pal. Um, Bones, these two guys will be pretty high usage off the bench. They're always fine plays to me. Um, they both have ceilings off of the bench. So, um, tricky team. Very, very tricky team. Um, I really don't, if I had to guess, I really don't know what they're going to do um, with Zubac, with Plumlee, with Batum, etc. Um, I don't know. So, hope this video helped you all out, and I will talk to you all in the next one.